Hey everybody, this is A7X Fan Ben, and welcome to blog number 40 of Pirates with Ben. And I wasn't able to blog yesterday, you may have seen my written post. Um, I wasn't able to do a video blog, I should say. Um, but I'm going to keep trying to do it at least five times a week, preferably Monday through Friday. So it's first video blog since last Friday, actually. Uh, right now I'm working on a rankings page for my fan site. So you may have seen my factional rankings threads in the past, along with set rankings. And now the ones that God Mason is doing as well once a week. So I'm planning to just keep it to the factional rankings for gunships and gold runners for now, but I might add more later. So I'm not nearly done with it, but um, eventually I'm going to have the rankings, all the rankings info and whatnot, and my opinions on that on a page. And I think it's going to be a sub page under the factions page, which is already done and on my website. Uh, deal of the day. Um, it's, this is going to be featured multiple times because I think it's one of the better deals I've seen on Revolution, especially in the past few years. 36 count booster display, 36 packs for $69.99 with free shipping, while Loot Seller is again with another good deal. So this one I featured on a Facebook group and uh, might get some fatigue, but it is a good deal and one of the better ones out there right now. And a 36 pack sealed box of RB just sold for only 51 So the shipping was around 15 at least for me. So would have been about 66, so not much less, but still 51 bucks for uh, for a sealed box of RB. It was one of the it was the more rectangular box rather than like an open flat one like this. There's different kinds of boxes. Um, so either way, both were good deals. And uh, this one it says more than 10 available, so it should be available for a while. And uh, if you don't have Revolution, it's one of the best sets. Uh, it has the Americans heavily featured. It's the first set with the Americans, so if you're a fan of them. Be a good set to get into and it has a lot of the game's best overall ships in the set as well and then a minor deal of the day just to get some variety because i'm going to be featuring some of the same ones just because they're the best deals i can find personally online um raintiger.com rain tiger games they've got some some ships usually commons that are pretty good price points so hms antelope for example 50 cents from barbary coast pretty solid price um this is a basically an empty english gold runner they don't have a lot of good cheap gold runners so this one only two cargo but sl move no ability helps keep the cost down so a solid ship and if you're going to get something like this i'd recommend checking out the rest of their website because they do have a lot of singles still available and for example they still have three of the antelope apparently so good site to check out i did buy from them back in i want to say 2015 it was a really good experience so i would recommend rain tiger overall and uh premium members at ministry trading get 10 percent off just as a little aside there so that's a neat little function of it as well so the card of the day sets one through 14 number two so crimson coast is going to be the set for this card of the day and i think it goes to number 303 because they had the, the crimson coast mega pack not like the oe mega packs but they had the a special pack with the with the providence destiny and a helmsman in it so number one to 303 to find a random game piece from Crimson Coast to review, 177, that's not a game piece, 286, 228, 83, something that might be French, I don't think it's a unique treasure, let's see what we got here, oh okay, Le Colibri, I don't know if that's how you pronounce it, but so here we've got a French one-masted sloop, it's number 83 from Crimson Coast of course, French rare one-master, uh, 7 points, 3 cargo, S move, uh, the only cannon is 3S, and L range cannons cannot hit this ship. So, this is a classic case of a defensive ability being relatively useless on a small ship, so you can just ram the mast off anyway, you don't have to shoot at it, let alone with L range cannons. And S range cannons are a bit more common than L range, so it's not really that great of an ability for a small ship at all. Um, so it's kind of similar to the turtle ship problem where you can ram the mast off because the turtle panels don't defend against ram damage. So the Calibri is mostly useless, honestly. Um, she can't really be a gunship because she has, uh, not very much firepower. There's not much point in improving it. Uh, the speed is atrocious. Um, I think this could have been maybe a four point ship. I'm thinking maybe then you could put a helmsman aboard or not and just have a slow gold runner, not a runner, but you know, a gold cargo ship. That doesn't take up much points, but at seven points, there's no real reason to use it. I wouldn't put many crew aboard. She needs a helmsman, but at that point, you don't have much cargo left over, two or less. And then that's nine points. 
You can get Labelul for that much, which is a really good ship, for example, uh, among many others. Um, even like the Volur, or however you pronounce it, a uh, French little small galley gunship is a better choice for nine points, for example. So good ability, but it's wasted on a on a ship that you can just ram out of out of the game pretty much. Even if you don't play with ram damage, it's not a threat, so you're not really gonna go after it anyway. And again, S range cannons are extremely common, so one hit it's gonna dismass it anyway. Um, so, other than the good ability, this is really not a good ship at all. Uh, the speed really holds it back. If it had S plus S speed, if the speed was doubled, I could see maybe Empty Gold Runner, but even then, uh, you know, Lay Bone Marine beats it easily. Although that's a little extreme, because Bone Marine is, in my opinion, the most perfect treasure in the game, because there's Explorer built in, and it's just perfect in every way, pretty much. But, so the Colibri, Game Beast rating out of 10, um, I think I'd have to go 2 out of 10. I, I don't think I can get a 1 rating between the cargo, you know, a mediocre cannon, and it's still a solid ability. I, don't, I can't give it a 1 out of 10. You know, like, Slay Solitaire would get a 1 out of 10. She's 10 points more expensive and a worse ship uh, for the most part, but but I would say 2 out of 10. This is pretty much useless. Not one I'd recommend acquiring, really, other than just collecting purposes. I think she was used, actually, in Command the Oceans towards the end, because the French literally just ran out of ships. I used, like, every ship in my collection uh, at least for the French, almost every ship they had. So this was launched as kind of like an afterthought gunship, um, like late in the game, or at least late in terms of that game, in terms of the battles and whatnot. But it, it was just because there were no other options, it wasn't actually that they wanted to launch the ship all that much. So anyway, uh, let's move on to the picture of the day. And there were a ton of pictures taken today in Economy Edition. June 19th, 2015 was a big day. In that game, I saw like dozens of pictures, so a lot happened, and I'll link in the description below to the battle report, of course, or the reports, and uh, I've got multiple pictures, there's a ton more in the in the thread, of course, but for example, here we've got the sickle cutting into the San Cristobal, uh, which is a cool picture in general. The cursed, suddenly, after launching that big squadron, they suddenly attacked the Franco-Spanish as they were sailing by the cursed home island. So it was a devastating attack, and the almost the entire Franco-Spanish squadron was wiped out, except for the San Esteban, of course, which had, she had one of the luckiest games I've ever seen in any game by a single ship, especially one that's not like, you know, HMS Titan or San Cristobal or anything. Uh, this picture, we've got, I think, Saint, yeah, St. Saint Pierre is getting attacked and destroyed by the Sea Hag and Shalbala, so the Cursed went after the Franco-Spanish forts as well. If you remember, the San Cristobal went on that fort-building expedition and built four forts pretty quickly, but the problem is they didn't have support. So as I talked about in my fort wrecking video, I'll try to include a link to that too, but it's on my channel, How to Wreck Forts. Uh, if you remember from that, if you don't support forts properly, you can they're pretty easily taken down most of the time by just attacking them at the same time with multiple gunships. So for example, here we have the Sea Hag, coming out of a fog bank, I believe, because she fog hopped, and then Shalbala with a swoop attack, possibly, anyway. So, the Franco-Spanish, um, they looked really good in economy edition for a while, and then they, everything, the, the wheels came off real quick. It was it was kind of crazy how fast they their downfall was, essentially. And here we can see the Cursed moving out and expanding east into the eastern, largely deserted area of the ocean in economy edition. And this is a view looking north at the top, you can see the arch, and then some of the action between the English and Americans is kind of blotted out from the arch and whatnot and the lighting, but you can see the cursed expanding. And already the Franco-Spanish squadron is largely been sunk or destroyed here. And then here was a really interesting moment. The pirates were really rich in this game, and they they didn't have many enemies for a while, so they were able to rake in a lot of resources and gold. So they managed to save up and launch all four of their Krakens from the Pirates of the Caribbean expansion from this military port all on the same turn. So you can see 8 times 4, 32 Kraken tentacles in this picture, um, ready for action. So a pretty crazy, kind of a kind of like a checklist type thing, kind of a fun, you know, how many people have launched or built all four of the, of the Krakens that the Pirates have in one turn. So it's a cool thing. It's like a, it, instead of a forest of masts, it's like a forest of tentacles uh, sticking up in the air. And then this one I really like because of the lighting, and it just shows the ships really crisply. So at a trading port, 
the Americans actually launched the Zanfu, which was card of the day a while ago on this blog. And I proxied the Shui Jian because uh, I didn't want to mess up either any of my 10 masters to make a Zanfu, which of course doesn't have artwork either from Return to Savage Shores. But that's the 10 master that allows American crew aboard. So from Return to Savage Shores. So it made sense that the Americans would launch her. So and that was the first time I used the Zanfu in a game, I think. So she didn't really get to see a lot of action, but made up for that in Vassal Campaign Game 3, to say the least. And uh, Vassal Campaign Game 2 a little bit, in service to the English. And here we can see some really, yeah, I just really like the definition of this picture. The Shui Jian, of course, is the main attraction. You can see her launched at the training port, but you can see canoes in the background, um, gathering resources, doing really well for the Americans. The Concordia at the left, you can see her nice crisp lines, nice, nice new looking ship. They had like sparkly sails sometimes, a little bit, kind of funky artwork, but anyway. And the nice gun ports there. USS Overton is one of the better American three-masted gunships in the game. And uh, some other good ships. Looks like Wasp and probably James Madison there too. So one of my one of the better pictures in terms of the quality. And then we've got the sickle again for the final picture of the day, tearing into Bull Hercul, Hercule. Um, and then we've got the the bloody blade scorpion is also off the off the port side. So this is another Another good like action shot of a pokey ship actually using the movable parts to to hack and slash into enemy ships. So a lot happened today in Economy Edition on this day three years ago, June 19, 2015. And I'll have links to the in the description to the battle report and uh, also to the deals of the day, of course, and uh, maybe the Calibri, but not not much to write home about there. And uh, like I said, hopefully I'm going to get the rankings page up on my fan site heartswithben.com relatively soon, within a week, hopefully less. And other than that, uh, leave a like, subscribe if you want more Pirates content. I hope to be back tomorrow, hopefully, and beyond for more video blogs. And uh, beyond that, have a great day or night, and thanks for watching.